So uh, this is a paid video. So and the person asks, what's the cost of converting mechanical to electrical cooling fan in Pozo 504? Um, now the cost, uh, is, there's no exact uh, figure to, I can give you that will cost the conversion. You know, so it all depends on the condition of the vehicle they want to do the conversion on, or uh, absence or presence of some uh, components in the vehicle you want to do the conversion on. So um, starting with uh, number one, what's the size of the radiator you want to use? Is it 504 radiator or the 505 radiator? I understand you are doing the conversion of in 504, but then um, even personally, I recommend uh, using 505 radiator in 504. Um, it helps with the cooling, especially when you use AC to, to help the engine better. 505 radiator is bigger. So it will cool, make help the cooling of the engine. Especially when you use AC. If I whether I use use AC or not, I always go with 505 radiator in 504. And so, for example, if you do now decide okay, you want to use 505 radiator for the conversion, you you can understand that the cost will not differ. Already you have the 505 radiator in 504. Or you still want to go ahead and use 504 radiator for the conversion. So it all depends. But let's assume that uh, whatever radiator you have in the 504 is what you want to use. So I'll use it for this um, um, video in explaining what it might cost you. Okay, so number one. Um, the 504 radiator and the 505 radiator, they have um, a thermistor or what you, I could generally, just generally say a fan switch attached. You could sell it a thermo, um, temperature switch. Okay, let's leave it a temperature or a temperature switch. Yeah, it's temperature switch anyway, but um, okay, let's leave it a fan uh fan switch this is a fan switch okay so it's a fan switch both uh, cars have that switch attached on their or screwed in on their radiators uh for 504 usually their own switches um attached on the top on the top that's the the top cover of the radiator behind it that's where the switch is usually attached uh, is a two pin uh, switch while the 505 radiator the the switch is attached on the right side of the radiator the tank you know this the radiators they have uh, two tanks for the 504 the tank is uh, on the top and on the bottom but for the 505, there are those two tanks are on the side of each, uh, on the side of the radiators, not up on the bottom. So that's the left side, right side. So for the 505, the switch is attached on the, um, what's it called? Right side, but it could also be on the left side anyway. So I don't, it, because it depends on the model or the engine of the, radiator some of them have different um, same side but the the openings where the radiator hoses go in differ based on the engine in the 505 okay so whatever happens it has to be on the side the switch you will find it on the side of any of those two tanks or cover of the radiator so uh, some of the switches on the 505 has 30 pins um uh, while most um ones with two pins you'll find them on the 504 but it doesn't matter you can use whether two or three pins personally uh i use three but the two will also serve the same people but if you use you have ac you may have to consider the three 
tele the one with three pins they are not easily available um, but the two pins are very much available um, so the if it, so it depends like I said if the radiator current radiator in your 504 has that switch already and the pins are still in good condition and then you won't have to bother buying that switch. Uh, I know the switch costs. Uh, I'm not sure. We, you might still get new one. New one is available, but you have to take your time and search for it in stores that sells such switches. Uh, of course, it has to be Bojo's shops that sells older car, older cars past like 504, 505, and the rest. So um, last time I know I bought it was maybe like two thousand to between two. Let's just say between two to five thousand. That's maximum you can ever spend on buying that switch in Nigeria, um, at least in Abuja here. But if yours is okay, then don't bother. However, if um, there's other way because that switch all it does is to trigger the fan, you know, when the temperature gets to and each of those switches they have different trigger figures some trigger the fan um around is it 75 between 75 to 80 degrees while some trigger the fan some between 80 to 90 or 90 something i've forgotten you know so it all depends on uh the you see it written or engraved on the 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 switch you see the switch something like 75 degrees Celsius or, or 75 slash 40 or 75 you know like 40 slash 75 you know something like that it all depends on the figure that is engraved on yours that will determine when it will trigger the fan the electric fan remember you are doing electric fan conversion now so um, there's another thing you can use. Let's assume, okay, you don't, the switch on yours is bad or your own radiator said they didn't put, um, it's supposed to have this, uh, the opening for that switch, but then as it doesn't have, or you decide to do something else that will give you, maybe the switches that you have here, they don't have the, the temperature that you want the fan to get triggered that you are comfortable with. Um, now there's an aftermarket uh, switch you could buy. And now set it to exact figure. That's exact temperature figure you want the fan to come up. Let's assume you don't want the fan to, to stay off uh, above 90 degrees Celsius, no matter what. Now you can now set it maybe 85. So once you get to that 85, the fan comes up. Um, like this one. Uh, this is one of the switches, aftermarket switch you could buy and um, do the job. Like I can see, these are, they are actually meant for this kind of conversion. Um, this one you can get it on AliExpress anyway. Um, so, if you're interested, maybe later I can send you the link since I have your WhatsApp uh, page. On AliExpress, you go there and order it. Uh, I didn't actually check the price, you know. So this from all you need to do is slot it. You can see where it was slotted in, um, in the radiator via the radiator hose. So you do it and then come set the temperature you want, do the connection. Then yeah, they give you what you want. So like I said, if if you are buying the normal switch for the boot in the radiators of either 504 or 505, you are looking at between two to 5,000. Okay, so that is it. Now, for the, the second part or, the, or second thing you are going to buy is the fan, the electric fan now. Now, the size of the radiator also will determine the cost of the fan because the size, remember 504 radiator is smaller. Why 505 is bigger. So if you are using 504 radiator, it means the fan you are going to put will be smaller. So I will expect it to cost less than uh, the 505 that will need a bigger fan than 505 radiator. So um, so that's where the cost now comes in. Now how do you know uh, the cost of the fan? See, the best way to do it is 
In fact, the best way to do this conversion, when it comes to getting a, a matched fan for your radiator, I wouldn't bother trying to buy online. At least yet. I didn't do it in my case. What I did, and I would recommend you do the same, is you drive the car, you have two options. Take off the radiator and go to the market with the radiator. But I would rather drive the car to the market where they sell fan, park the car. Now, get to in, enter inside the market. Don't bother with Pojo line where they sell Pojo pass because you're likely not going to find an electric fan that will match uh, either of these two radiators. Remember, at that time, they were not doing electric fan when they did so. The newer uh, Peugeot cars, their radiators are very long or completely different, so you may not be able to find one that will You could anyway, but I didn't bother in my case. So, you go to, like, we had a say Japanese, because at that time, I think most of their older cars, maybe in the early 90s or so, or 80, late 80s, we were also using electric fan at that time, or whatever. Anyway, in my case, I didn't even care where the fan came from, which vehicle. I know I entered Japanese line, so, um, you know, met, and I didn't remove my radiator. I left my car parked somewhere close to the market or the entrance of the market. So, met people that sell, enter fan shops. So, so they now bought different sizes towards the, to the vehicle. So all I did was we are just we didn't remove the radiator, just left it there. However, you in that case you have to remove the mechanical fan. You have to remove it. Once you get to that market, remove it. If you don't know how to remove it, then you have to go with your mechanic so that he will remove the fan. The mechanical fan is very easy to remove anyway. So it's not a big thing. So you have to remove it once you get to that market. So you can also put it back after you are done buying the van because you won't do the conversion there. So he will not be mount, they will not be and be putting the you know the fan will be behind the radiator. It has to be behind that. It has to be in between the radiator and the engine. That's where you're going to mount the fan, not in front, because there's less space. Unless you don't have uh, AC, you are, that's, there's no condenser. But personally, just do it at the back. It's better that way. Mount it between the, uh, on the radiator that is facing, the side that is facing the engine. So, they will now be putting the fan till they get one. Because the fan you are going to buy or use will have a uh, shroud. What we call fan shroud or fan cone. You know, that plastic part that uh, the fan is attached. So it has to come with it. So you have to be, until you have to be putting, matching. That is going to be used fan. You can get brand new fan online, but why are you sure that when you get it, it's going to match your radiator? Unless you have to do the dimension, check the dimensions, check all those things, you know, before to know if the one you find online. Personally, I'll just go there and look for what I want from the used ones. That's what I did in 2011. And it's still there till today. That's what I'm telling you. So I won't bother trying to spend so much. So you, you keep putting, getting until then I find one that the shroud will cover, even if not complete uh, uh, size of the radiator, but at least more than... Uh, 70% of the fan, you need to cover a lot part of the fan so that uh, you'll be able to draw. Remember, when you put it behind the radiator, it, what we now do is to suck heat out of the radiator, not to push air through. It's pulling air out from the radiator. That's how you're going to connect the fan. So in that case, um, you need one that will be able to cover Major, most part of the radiator, not just half. And the reason why I prefer taking the car there rather than taking the radiator, removing the radiator maybe from your place or workshop and not take the radiator to look for a side of the fan is you need to be sure that the fan that eventually you're going to buy 
that the tail of the fan, the behind that fan, it will not be touching your water pump pulley or any part of the engine because some fans are smaller, that they are not as uh, wide as the other, or you know, for whatever reasons. Or the motor on the fan, some have bigger motors, some smaller. So you need to be sure that when you mount it, you make sure, okay, this is how you want this radiator to stand. Or you can bend it forward a little, move it forward or backward a little. However, make sure, the reason the engine, the car has to be there is to be sure that when you put slot in the, you put, put the fan behind, after you remove the mechanical fan, you put the fan behind the radiator, that is not touching any part of the engine, most especially the water uh, pump pulley, because that one will be spinning. So you don't need anything, the fan, to even get close. Yeah, it could be cool, but at least there has to be a gap. But if you go to market and buy fan or order it online, and uh, even if you go with the radiator, coming back to the vehicle, mount the radiator with the fan, and I realize that the fan behind the fan has is too big and is touching the engine. So in that case, it will work. So you have to go with the vehicle. You know, all these things can be done within an hour or thereabouts. It could even be the first fan they will bring will match to match what you need. So you do it. Once you get a sizable distance, then of course you can now test the fan on or off the vehicle. You can test it right there because the fan they are supposed to come with um well, fan has a, a connector. So you could just have two wires run it direct from the to the battery of the, of the of the 504. Just run it there. It will spin. If you hear the sound, the speed, and uh, confirm that the bearing is still okay. If it's making uh, wearing sounds to show you that the bearing is weak or it's not spinning fast or it's not even working at all, eh, hey, look for another one. You know, so you confirm the speed. You know. Try as much as possible to get a fan that is at least big enough or has a lot of blade, you know, to be sure that you'll be able to suck a lot of air out. Or you just, you could put it there temporarily without uh, tightening it and then find, to do the wiring connection, somebody will have to hold the fan for you or you hold the fan, let some, the person now do the, the, tap, the connection, those two wires, basically a negative to the battery to see how much the volume of air it will come that it will pull from the uh, radiator fins. How the speed, well, not to be sure that uh, a lot of air goes to because remember the fan doesn't only suck out heat from the radiator or pull heat or push heat out to the radiator. It also uses that same uh, air that is pulling out from the radiator to also cool the engine. So you need enough uh, air, depending on the engine temperature, to also push. What it does is, as it's pulling heat uh, through the radiator fence, it's also pushing that same breeze or air or that comes through the radiator on the engine and push it, use it to push off the heat coming off the engine. At the same time, it's also doing the radiator. So that's why you need to be sure. And yeah, once you get the one that size the radiator well, also be sure that um, on that fine shroud, that uh, it, it touches part of the radiator where you can bolt it on the radiator. If it doesn't get to the part of the radiator where, because if it touches where, if it, the, the shroud only ends where the, um, the like the tank, the cover, or uh, where it ends where that if, if you want to bolt it on, it's going to perforate and damage the radiator. That's wherever you bolt it on will cause leakage. Then don't bother. Because each of these radiators have a part where you can actually bolt without causing any damage. You know, they have a part that uh, water doesn't pass through. So you can easily bolt or find a way to... Don't weld fan that uh, on the radiator because eventually the fan may fail in future or you need to disconnect remove the fan or radiator at some point so don't worry it has to be 
attached. So, um, there are other ways uh, that most of these uh, aftermarket radiators, uh, the way they did the, uh, the new ones, um, you don't even need to, there's a way they do it. They, they, they have clips or stuff that hold the, the fan to, uh, to the fins. So, it will not be the fan fins that will hold the fan. But that usually when you order the new ones after um, the Universal fans online. Maybe there's a place they sell it uh, physically in Nigerian market. Anyway, I which I don't know. So, um, so the, uh, that is the, now when it comes to the cost of the fan, it now depends. I would say maybe minimum of maybe five or ten thousand naira, depending on the one you find. Or uh, maximum of twenty thousand naira may not get up to that much. So in that case, you can. Like I said, you don't know which one will work. It may not be a Pojo one. It may not be a Japanese one. It may be a Mercedes one. Nobody knows until you you find one that match exactly yours, your own radiator. You know. So uh, but you could, I could say okay, maximum twenty thousand. That is in between. Okay. So that is for the fan. Now for the 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 wiring. Uh, you now need uh, some wires. Not those things because you may have to buy. You may have to buy wire. You know, I will always recommend buy used wires. Remove from used vehicles. It could be from any car. Don't buy brand new unless you are sure it's original wire. Most of these brand because what you need is flexible wire. So most of the new ones are useless. If you put it, it will burn off. So you need uh, thick wires. Use ones that are good enough, or you could buy a rich money. So, other things uh, I can't tell you the exact amount. Um, you know, you then uh, you need to buy relay. Uh, in my case, I use a Katia relay. Katia relay is uh, what uh, popularly they call 406 relay. You find them 406, 206, 607, 601. You know, stuff like that. Then use the major, a lot of Pojo car. Or you could use any other, but with me, I prefer. Uh, if you are using the relay, uh, our other, our advice is use one that has up to at least 45 amps. If you can, better. 45 amps. Uh, all these other ones with uh, 30, 35, you may not really. Uh, Increase the fan speed may not be as high as you want, so I would rather you go for something of a minimum at least 45 or 50 amps um, rating on the relay. Um, for me, I use I use up to two relays because I have like um, as a way I did mine, well, one that works with uh, with or without uh, AC. No one that works without AC, the connection I did it works without AC. If that then I didn't put on the AC. When the temperature gets uh, mine comes up at uh, is it 90 degrees Celsius? Forgot it. Or uh, the second the, the second layer I also did the connection. So the same fan also now works once I switch on the the AC, you know. So it depends on how you want to do it. So, you could use uh, at least oh, up to three relays. Self, try to remember how many relays I use on mine. So, it depends on what you want to do. If you are not using AC, one relay will serve you. Don't need more than that. Um, so, let's just say maybe the wires, the relays, and then you also need fuses. You need to uh, this, uh, you need to attach fuse in case uh, if there's any problem, it will cut off. So, uh, to protect the vehicle. And the fan, uh, there won't be any uh, you know, fire break because of that. So let's assume everything concerning the wiring will cost you maybe like five thousand less or a little bit more, depending on how far you are willing to go with the conversion, or how safe you want to make the conversion. You know. So all these things, when you, I think that's what the basically you need for the conversion. Uh, it's not work, it's not too much to do convert a uh, mechanical fan to electric fan in uh, 504. 
and 505. So, um, if you're not talking about okay, you want maybe what you have is 504 radiator, you want to put 505. In that case, um, you have to look for 505 radiator. If you can, I recommend buy new one. Don't bother to use one. Uh, last time I bought new one, it's around 25,000. Uh, that one has like uh, how many cents? Three or four cents? Forgot to. 25,000 new one. That was like two Was it two years ago? I don't know about. Forgot it. But let's see. So you may or may not be able to find new one easily, but uh, like I said, if I have a 504, I won't bother with 504 radiator. I'll put some um, 505 radiator. It's much better. It cools the engine better. 504 radiator is very small. Um, that's for me. Okay, so that is it. So you can, how much can you now say? If you are not buying radiator, maybe maximum you will spend maybe like 30, 30 something, thousand or less. If you are buying radiator, maybe you are looking at 50 to 60 thousand or less or more. So it all depends who is doing the conversion, how much you are willing to do, or how much you are willing to spend to spend, make the car safe with the conversion. I did mine since 2011, never had any problem with the conversion till this moment because I took my time, spent what I needed to spend to make it work the way I want it to work and um, also make it safe so it doesn't, if there's any issue, maybe wire touching somewhere it will refuse to take care of it you fix the problem, put another fuse, that will be the end I never had any issue that caused great to cutting of fuse anyway like I said, I took my time you know, insulated the wires and we did it well, packed the wires well so that it won't look very untidy or crossing here and there. Okay, so I think that will be the all for this video.